The landscape has definitely changed in a way mm. and uh, all thanks to, also all thanks to COVID because it has definitely changed the way we do things, right? Exactly, yeah. especially for students out there. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who is currently taking her master's mm -hmm. and I cannot, I do not, I told her every single time, every time I look at you, it makes me think twice about mm -hmm. going back to school mm -hmm. simply because of how uh, the not only the students mm -hmm. have to learn but also the professors having to, you know, curate the classes. They definitely. no longer, sometimes they do online, sometimes they require mm -hmm. the students to come mm -hmm. for uh, physical classes. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very, very interesting journey right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, those of you guys who are in the education uh, sector. Yeah, because at the end of the day, mm. uh, do you like the traditional stuff of actually going to college, going to university to learn, or do you prefer be, uh, having taught online? It's funny, you know, because uh, when COVID mm. happened, uh, students were like, ah, oh, man, I have to study at home. You know, I don't know how to study at home because where I study is the same place where I sleep. Mm -hmm. And right now, when everything is new, you know, yeah, <laughs> going back to the endemic phase, when, of course, uh, <laughs> face-to-face -face session will be resumed and they'll be like, I don't, know, I don't want to go back to college. Yeah, because it t at the end of the day, like going to college is like going to going to work. You have to wait. I at least had to wake up mm -hmm. two hours before, get on the KTM and mm -hmm. uh, get KTM, get on the bus, go to uni, so on and so forth. So we're actually going to speak to uh, your university mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> chancellor. So that's going to be very, very exciting. You actually went to this university, you're an alumni. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about you introduce them? Okay, yes, let's the get the ball rolling. The future of education after COVID, of course. Let's welcome uh, Professor Patricia Davidson, Vice Chancellor of UOW Australia. Welcome to the show. Thank nice you to have so here, much. Prof. Great and also Dr. Sri Dr. Michael Yam, Chancellor of UOW Malaysia KDU. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Chancellor. Thank you. Super, super exciting. They were telling uh, off camera how proud they, uh, they are, you know, having Brandon as their alumni. How does that feel, Brandon? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> You're grown up now, Brandon. Yeah. I, hope, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. We, we're going through your student record. Oh, oh my oh. gosh, please don't do so. Anyway, the first question <laughs> is, okay, how has COVID-19 impacted your global network? Uh, we, let's start with Chance. Uh, Prof, yeah. Well, um, I think it's been devastating in many ways, just the suffering around the world. But as you mentioned, there's been some silver linings. With There's been huge disruption um, for student mobility. But people have prevailed. Teachers have been innovative. Mm -hmm. Students have been collaborative. And in spite of major disruption. Most students are continuing on time and on target. And we've learned a lot about ourselves, our flexibility, our ability to innovate. And we've also learned about the power of technology in mm -hmm. promoting connectivity. Mm -hmm. right. Ad tech, uh, yeah. When it comes to ad tech, um, is there any room for improvement in terms of connectivity, Chancellor? Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole learning curve mm -hmm. when this pandemic hit at, towards the end of 2019 mm -hmm. in other countries and then finally came to our shores mm -hmm. in uh, 2020, uh, 2020 yeah. where we had the first lockdown, 18 March. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how long this is going to last because mm -hmm. nobody had a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you all know, this has become very protracted. Mm -hmm. And I think when people realise that this is not going to be a short-term crisis, everyone sort of just ramp up. Yeah. That includes myself yeah. and Antique, right? I have to start to learn Zoom, yeah. MS Teams, uh, Blue Jeans, uh, oh, wow. all yeah. that sort of stuff so that I could connect with the, with the people, the stakeholders that, yeah. uh, that I deal with. You know, these are board of directors of public mm -hmm. listed company and we're carrying out um, board meetings, even AGM based on that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and that's just the, the sort of uh, um, the hardware, right? Mm -hmm. The regulators, you think about the stock exchange, the security commission, the mm -hmm. government, have to change the laws, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that you can adapt that resolutions carried out in the air, in mm -hmm. cyberspace, mm -hmm. is also uh, recognised and accepted. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone sort of, um, uh, sort of speeded up mm -hmm. to, yeah. to just adapt. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad they did because this thing lasted until... Today, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. Almost yeah. today. Until today, it's impacted. Like yeah. I said, you know, I'm looking at all my friends who are currently in university. Um, uh, my, uh, you know, any of my younger friends who are currently in university. It's actually quite... I'm actually quite... Um, 
I plot them for you know how fast they they match your depth. I plot the lecturers uh, yeah. for being able to adapt as well. Like you said, uh, for certain actually, it's interesting that you mentioned that you guys were talking to your stakeholders, your BODs and whatnot. Because when we think about the education system, uh, the way I think about it, it's like okay, the 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 educator and the student. I don't think about the business end of it, right? Yeah. Uh, but we're actually gonna gonna go back and. Um, talk about the, the lecturers because uh, throughout the pandemic, I saw so many videos of lecturers having to do online classes. Some of, I think the one memorable video I had was um, a lecturer, I think in the States, he felt so awkward because he's an old school lecturer. He's so used, he likes yeah. the interaction between him and the students. So what he did was instead, um, his, next to his laptop was a doll. So he actually spoke to the doll <laughs> as if the doll was a student. Um, so that it felt more interactive and mm -hmm. him as an educator as well, you know, you don't get... Yeah, you are not you don't you don't meet the silence of a Zoom class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So in the minds of um, uh, educators uh, nowadays, uh, I'm actually curious: will the will um, the education education system still be done in a way where it's half and half? Uh, uh, students are gonna you know go for online classes, or are they gonna you know gear towards a full physical class for I think for the next one year even. Yeah. Well, I think around the world, people are trying to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And I think what we've recognised mm -hmm. is there's a huge variability in what students want. As you mentioned, some students are thinking, great, you know, I can do this from my bedroom and yeah. it's good. And others really miss the connectivity. Mm -hmm. So I think we're trying to get to that sweet space, which is probably the blended learning model. Mm -hmm where um, why should you travel for two hours to sit in a lecture hall for something that you can do at home? Mm -hmm. But really making sure that your time on campus is around connection and activities. And also I've had to tr learn a lot of different things. Just here watching your production today, I think like in teacher education, there's gonna be a lot more about multimedia. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how you don't actually have to talk at someone for an hour mm -hmm. to get a message through. So I think there's going to be a lot of innovation in teaching and learning mm -hmm. and, and aligning expectations. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where we're at. I love it. Yeah. I love the word li aligning expectation. Because yeah. at least, you know, as a student, I come like, I, I'm. <laughs> at the end of the day, how I think about it is that each and every course has its needs, right? Uh, a mass comm student, is different from an architecture student, mm -hmm. different from a medical student. Because I think with those, uh, with like uh, uh, anybody who's sitting for an architecture course or a medical course, they need to be able to do, do the it. practical. Yeah, like for me, I, when I was in media, I could still do my portfolio and still submit it online. It's still fine. I'm still able to do my presentation online. Um, so it's actually very, very interesting to see how the education system is going to adapt. Mm -hmm. Uh, for you, Brandon, mm -hmm. do you prefer, if you were back, going back to a student, right? I'm actually very curious. Would you want to stay inside a class mm -hmm. or you're good with doing online? Uh, I think I would want to go back to class. Yeah, yeah. right? Face to face is different in that sense because uh, like what Chancellor just mentioned, there is some sort of a connection with the students. And uh, this is the area in which whereby I think most, is, uh, most of them are still trying to breach the gap of actually connecting to their students because it's actually very important. Uh, when you do it online, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you've got to email your lecturer and things like that and get a reply. But at the end of the day, Chancellor, here's a question. Uh, what is the depth of the impact globally in the education sector? I, I think as Trish has mentioned, I think it's been tremendous in terms of negative impact. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if you look at the recent survey, Globally, four out of ten students think that will impact negatively mm -hmm. their employment prospects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Malaysia was, I think, uh, if I recall, about 36 percent mm -hmm. of the students think the same way that it will impact their future. Um, but having said that, I think something like 70 percent of the students think they will still need a university mm -hmm. education. Yeah. So that they are job prospects mm -hmm. you know, would be good. Mm -hmm. So I guess what they're saying is, do you go to university or do you not go to university? Mm -hmm. yeah. The simple answer is yes, you do, because 70% mm -hmm. uh, thinks uh, optimistically that they'll get a job. Mm -hmm. um, this question wouldn't arise if not for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I come from the employment uh, side of the, of the equation, um, just to add some color to what Trish says, mm -hmm. um, she's saying that I think um, 
they need to find a landing as to the blend, whether it's 70, 30, mm -hmm. Uh, rem uh, remote, uh, virtual and physical or 60, 40 or whatever it is. I think, uh, as you rightly say, Zoe, it really depends on, course, on right. the courses that you, you do. Mm -hmm. I, w I would hate to go to my cardiologist who has attended his seven years course 80% of the time virtual. Yeah. Right? Uh, how, how, you, how would you even do yeah, that? Architecture, You're operating the air. Yeah, architecture is <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. But uh, from the from the commercial perspective, I, I think maybe the, the point is missed here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about just gaining of uh, education and academic excellence, mm -hmm. the IQ part. The EQ yeah. is yeah. equally, if not more important, mm -hmm. right? The fact that you can go to a water fountain and have a chat and come up with bright ideas, you know, yeah. uh, versus doing on Zoom. Yeah. I, I think it's very, very different. I think the world will probably decide pretty quickly, mm -hmm. where, I mean, if, if, if I'm uh, from the employment side, I would want to see a new university that comes to my firm that does say engineering and construction management, say, I, I want to see that in his report that he's actually attended 80% of the mm -hmm. classes physically. Yeah. Mm. However, if it's journalism, it's maybe the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care, maybe 2080. Yeah. So we need to probably put that and tick against the box mm -hmm. that that profession that the person intends to go into mm -hmm. has got minimum attendance at classes. Think about those days, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tutorials and all that, right? Most of the things, preliminary session, you can disappear, but tutorials, you must be there. You, you have to. So, oh my gosh. So, you miss three classes and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So, you, so you deep dive, really the ed education of those days is saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is physical contact, it is, it is knowing all your peer groups, mm -hmm. the behavior, the behavioral sciences you want to know. So that when you go into a job market, you're all prepared for all sorts of character, you know. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. yeah. I sh like, I, my best moments in my, I think adulthood is all university. Like, um, like you said, it's all about the connection you make in your university. That's the, I think, other than actually getting your, your, your papers, getting your education, mm -hmm. getting that, you know, getting the cert that says, yo, I have my degree, I have my masters, I have a PhD, mm -hmm. diploma, whatever you guys decide to take. Uh, but it's also the connection because, like you said, I haven't met, I haven't met some of my uh, high, uh, those high school mates, uh, my uni mates, uh, after we graduated, and a couple of years later, hey, we're all in the same industry, or mm -hmm. we're all in the same line of work, mm -hmm. or some sort the of networking. Same, yeah, the Very networking, important. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I want to talk about the students, the thirty percent. Um, does that include the students who decided to drop out during the pandemic, or decide, look, possibly this is not for me. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my money. I'm probably just gonna go ahead, and you know, I need, I perhaps have a family that I need to help to support. Yeah. I'm gonna drop out of university, yeah. and I'm gonna work. Um, so does that 30% include the uh, dropouts or is that just well, a... I think, Zoe, you've brought up a really good point is that the pandemic has really widened mm -hmm. inequities in society. And um, say even in Australia, you know, which is a very wealthy country, we've just seen these huge um, g widening gaps between the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. And the same as um, now, your ability to access the internet, to afford the internet, um, is huge. So let's say, for example, in many areas in many countries where people don't have digital access, that's going to impact their ability to not just get education, um, but also healthcare services. So um, I think, and then what we're finding is that many people have the financial um, uncertainty has mm -hmm. really impacted. But I think the other thing that has really emerged out of the pandemic is that, you know, your life is long and your education can take numerous journeys. Mm -hmm. So um, for many of our students who, where it was hard and they dropped out, we're really trying to encourage them to come back um, to, and to recognise that, you know, it's okay to, if it was too hard, but mm -hmm. come back and try again and we'll help you. Mm -hmm. because we know that a university education is such a predictor of your security mm -hmm. across your whole lifespan and not just yours, your, mm -hmm. your families. Mm -hmm. for, say for women, you know, when a, if you're educated, your children are going to be educated. Yep. So it's just so important. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, Chancellor, uh, there's a very good point there, Prof. But we'll get back to you shortly uh, because we need to get uh, both of your opinions. Uh, let's talk about dropouts, the students who unfortunately, like what Zoe just said, they had to fend for their family, they have to you know, support their families because of the pandemic, the future is uncertain. 
money is the uh, is at utmost importance here because they need to support their family. What would you? Uh, what kind of advice would you give them to these students who uh, who are dropouts, who still you know hanging halfway? What would you tell them so that they can actually come back to university? Actually, to those listeners out there, the word "drop out" seems a bit like too a, harsh. Yeah, yeah. stereotyping. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm a dropout. I will say, it. but I have my reasons. I'm a dropout. Yeah, I have my reasons. We all drop out. Yeah. We all drop out sometimes. Yeah. I didn't drop out. I'm halfway done. Yeah. I'm halfway done. Half boiled egg, like yes, that's how I like to think. Yeah. 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 Picking from what you see, yeah. Zoe, education is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, this particular uh, pandemic has been exceptional, yeah. unprecedented. That's the word they use, and I think the ecosystem around education. The universities such as UOW or our public universities has to give this opportunity to say, yes, I understand that you, you have left mm -hmm. education because of other pressing needs. Yep. And, and we know in Malaysia, a, quite a lot of families are living on marginal yes. sort of survival. Mm -hmm. And if one of the breadwinner loses a job, that's You're it. gone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, think about our East Malaysian brothers and sisters. Uh, when they go back to where they live, there's no internet. You, you can climb on the tree and try and get the signal, right? Yeah. So those are very good reasons. And do you uh, discriminate them from coming back? Yeah. The answer must be no. I think we must facilitate. In fact, some units will say, if you have drop out during 2020 and 2021, please come back. I'm going to give you a great discount so that you, you, you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's more critical in the Malaysian uh, context because Unlike, say, Australia and UK, you can always go back, open university, yeah. there's mature student arrangement. You know, when you, when you drop out from a university here, it's like the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. The whole village will say, oh, you know, don't, don't, don't marry him or don't marry her because she's <laughs> <laughs> her prospects are gone. So I think the whole education environment needs to sort of transform itself mm -hmm. to cope with this unprecedented mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. And there may be more coming in the pipeline too. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Chancellor. Thank you, Chancellor. What about you, Prof? What would you say to them? Well, you know, it's interesting. Like, I went to the Australian National University my first year out of school. It didn't work out. And very quickly, I then I, I, I am actually an alumna of the University of Wollongong and it worked out that time. But, you know, one of the things that um, I tell all of our faculty and, it, and I, I know their practices is, um, you know, kindness and generosity. Uh, just don't be harsh to judge. And I think I'm only here where I am because teachers were kind to me and yep. helped me sh find the way. So, uh, you know, I absolutely agree with the Chancellor. Um, and anyone that's listening today, go back, try it. Um, if you, you just might have not been the right course, mm -hmm. the right time or the right place. But, you know, and education is just such a wonderful uh, gift of life. I love it. That's a perfect note to end uh, our interview today. Mm -hmm. And I really want to talk a little bit more about, you know, how the education system is going to move um, towards the endemic. But again, fortunately, we've run out of time. I didn't even realise that our producer was like, oh, last question. I'm like, oh, we're done. Okay, so thank I, I'm you again. relieved because when she did her confession, yeah. I was going to confess how many universities <laughs> I drop off. <laughs> hey, Brandon. But it's a way out. <laughs> yeah, uh, but again, lovely, lovely note to end on. And again, those of you guys who are, you know, uh, drop, mm -hmm. you're halfway there. Can yeah. you, you didn't drop out. No. You're halfway there. Definitely not. You're halfway yep. there. Yep. Um, yes, you're the... seeing two fine examples here. Exactly, yeah. see? <laughs> and here. And here, and here, yeah. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, you know, come back next time. We'll talk about, you know, perhaps uh, whether or not we can go fully online. Yeah. And whether or not, you know, your uh, cardiology students can <laughs> yeah. actually finally <laughs> perhaps send a body to them and oh they can probably gosh, operate. Oh my gosh, can you actually imagine us? I'll send you a treadmill, just work on that first. Oh, crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. crazy.